Okay. Um, hi, everyone who's tuning in. This is um, the San Francisco Women Who Code chapter, and we're doing a mock interview tonight. Um, our mentors tonight are um, Gabriela Martinez and Daniela D'Souza. Um, go ahead and take it away. Hi, Gabriela. How are you doing? Hi, Daniela. I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing well, too. So, uh, Gabriela, I work as a software engineer, and I work on uh, real-time event-driven systems. How, how about you? Well, I am a software engineer, and I do web applications mostly, and also uh, applications for cloud, and using Microsoft technologies most of the time. Awesome. So, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. All right, so as you know, uh, today we will be using uh, a couple of tools for the interview process. So I can see that you have the whiteboard open. And yes. the other uh, tool we'll be using is Codopad. So codopad.io. So we'll yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I have also uh, opened the link of Codopad. Awesome. All right, without much ado, we'll get started. Okay. Okay. So I'd like to start off with the first problem and I will share it via the whiteboard. Right? Oops. Okay, I see it now. <laughs> Just a second. It has picked uh, the color. Okay, me, hold on. Okay, do you, do you see it here? Yes, I can see it. Awesome. That's fine, the color is fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fine. So let's say you are given a string, okay? A string of numbers and operators, so as is the case here. Okay. Now, I would like for you to return all possible results from computing all the different possible ways to group numbers and operators. So I'm gonna give you an okay. example. So let's say the input string is two minus one minus one. So the different ways you could combine these, these numbers are you could combine two and one together, and then you get one, one minus one is zero, or I could combine one and one first, and then my answer is two. So the answer, uh, the, the result that I'm expecting is the form of a list and a list of the po these possible values. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want to uh, do one more example? Yes, you just read my mind. <laughs> so okay. here's, here's the other example. So this one, um, oh, I, I, sh I should have also mentioned that the valid operators are plus the addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So those are the only three valid operators. Got it. Okay. So see here. Only those three. Okay. Got these operators. And uh, here is, this is very similar to the first one. So you can see how we have, we're combining these different numbers and these yes. operators. You're finding all the different combinations and we're doing the computing and then you have the result. Okay. Okay, the, uh, I think I have uh, inter understood the problem. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me try to explain to you what I ex understood. So um, the first thing that I see is that um, we have an expression and what we want is to find a way to break out the expression in parts. Like for example, in the first case that we have two minus one minus one, we have uh, in the results, we have two cases where we break out the expression. First, we, uh, we group them the two minus one, which is one expression. And then that expression it's evaluated and then we combine them or we combine the result to have the second result. And so in this case, uh, we want to like find a way to group them. First, uh, split them based on the operator. And because we have a left part and a right part, and 
a way to combine them and evaluate them after after this grouping and so i think this is um like a problem that can be divided in sub problems and for example i can take the left part and evaluate this part and then use the operator and mm -hmm. after the operator i have the other sub problem or mm -hmm. the sub expression which is kind of a similar case we are again with an expression that we can break out again like we have uh, done before like we are like recursively doing this same the same thing this uh, breaking breaking out the uh, expression and then evaluating and and i think that the breakout point is the operator because that's when you know that you have you have already a part of the expression and so that's when you when you reach to a point where you have an operator that's when you want to break out the expression and starting or uh, having the other part of the uh, like let's say the right part or uh, or the next uh, sub expression so yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we can we can use um, this approach about uh, splitting the problems to problems which I think is divide and conquer or also you can use a recursion because it's a kind of the same the same uh, operation over and over until you get to your base case and I think that would be a, a good approach to start with and we can then after look for some optimizations, if we, if we have time or we want to go on that. And okay. I don't know what you think if we can, uh, mm -hmm. let's try out, uh, try to implement, I will try to implement that in the colder path. And let's see that. Uh, Gabriel, you, you, you mentioned the base case. So what would the base case be here? Yeah, for example, um, in the case of the first expression, the, the most basic thing that we can have in an expression is a number. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say that uh, the base case is when you have just one number, that's, mm -hmm. that's the least or the, most, the, smallest, the smallest part that you can have in an expression. So I would say that that's the base case when we have just a number. Okay, and so what would be the output here? Just uh, in that case will be yeah just the number two and and that will be a valid case because if we don't we can have an operator we just uh, because that an operator doesn't have a value so mm -hmm. the most uh, valid uh, a valid result and the basic uh, case or the most basic case is when we have just one number and that would be the base case for okay. for the yeah for evaluating the expression Okay, so Sounds I good. think I think that that would be, yeah, the base case. Okay, cool. and so yeah, I will try to keep that in mind too for the implementation of the of the code. Mm -hmm. So I I will go to the to the color pad link, which I have already opened, and I will implement uh, the solution using C sharp because it's my strongest language, okay. and I will start with that, and I will. Uh, I will delete, delete all this code because we are not going to be using this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will delete it. And, and what I would like to add is a method where I'm going to um, receive, I'm going to start by typing the method, the, the, the signature mm -hmm. of the method. And I'm going to call this like evaluate expression. And this method will uh, get the input of the or or of or the expression, and I'm going to return here a list of numbers, which are going to be integers, and I think that will that will be it. And well, let's start. Uh, well, the first thing that we need to check is uh, that we have an input, uh, and this. Uh, so we'll be we'll be using an if for that. So I, I will I will check that my input is if it's null or if it's 
uh, empty string. I'm going to return an empty list of integers too, but just an empty list. Okay. And if that's not the case, then we can go over and we can start implementing the or algorithm. So I'm going to call my list of result out of result. And I'm going to do this uh, declaration of this uh, list. And after this, I think I can, I can start with a for loop where I'm going to go over the string or the input. And as long as I have, uh, okay, well, let's go on. Uh, it's, it's, this is the input and the length and um, I'm going to increment this and I'm oh, sorry for the typo. And I think I'm forgetting my base case. Yeah, uh, before this for the for loop, I would like to have my base case to check if we have this, uh, just the simple expression that we were talking about that with just a number. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just uh, declare a integer value so we can evaluate and if I'm going to do uh, like this uh, validation mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, be using this uh, method which is just try parse the input mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to have this uh, out of result so if this is uh, true if this is evaluating to true to true, I'm going to add this to my list of results. Mm -hmm. And so that means that we were able to, to evaluate the expression or, if we, or in the case of we have just a number of in the input. So that's, that's our base case. And we can then start uh, evaluating the expression. So I'm going to declare a chart to uh, have the, the, just all the tokens or all the parts of the expression. And so I'm going to have input of i, because it's my index. And I'm going to check first of the case when we have um, a breakpoint. And because when we have a breakpoint, that's when we want to part the expression. So if my char the char or the character that we have, it's either a plus symbol or if we have a, let's say a minus, or the other one, which is a multiplication, mm -hmm. okay. So if this is the case, that's when we want to break the expression. And in this case, uh, I want, since I have already the operator, what I have before the operator, it's the left part of the expression. So I'm going to use uh, a variable where I can hold the left part and then evaluate that. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is uh, I just have this substring method which I'm going to use to uh, have the only part, the, the part that is before the operator. Mm -hmm. And so it's of a string. And I'm going to be using I plus one because I'm going, going uh, after the operator and until the rest of this, uh, of this uh, string. And so once that I have this uh, the left and right, that's when I want to do again the same process because I have already break out the two parts that, that I have so far. So um, that's what I have. I will have in the next in the call up to to this expression because I'm going to do the same. So mm -hmm. I will have to do the same. So I'm going to uh, call 
the method and I'm going to assign what this, evaluate, this evaluation um, goes uh, to, the, to a list where I'm going to have all the results that I have from, from this expression. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have this as a left part. Here is going to be the evaluate expression. And I'm going to send the left part so it can be evaluated. And, and then I will use another list to have the right part of the expression. Mm -hmm. So after this, uh, this case, uh, we will be having in the left part all the ways or the values that that that, uh, that we can we were able to to evaluate and again we want to use our operator because that will be the left part of the expression so what i'm going to use is now i'm going to go over these numbers and and applying the operator to this to each of the parts or to each of the values that we already get from the expression. So I'm going to use this uh, for each because I'm going, I want to go over each one of the elements in the left part and as well at the, at the right part. And so I'm going to have this other for each and it's okay and the right, right part. You have 35 minutes left. It's been 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so once we have the two, uh, the two values already, um, let me correct this, and uh, we can now check if we want to do a mine, uh, an addition or a mine or a subtraction or a multiplication. And so that's what I'm going to, to, to check. And so if our character that we already find or we already found it's a plus sign what i'm going to do is make an addition of the left part with the right part and that will be one more result that i can add to my list of results mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay sorry sorry for the typo i missed the brackets I'm going to add the bracket because I like, I think it's better when we use the brackets okay. and the if. So I'm going to add, a, so my value of the left part and plus the value of the right part. And as well as the, as the other cases. So that's, that will be, the else and I'm going to as well as adding this to the list of our expressions. And the last one is multiplication. Okay. I think, uh, yeah. Um, so after that, we will have all the possible values that we could evaluate with our expression and all the parts that we have. Uh, so we want to return that, uh, that list that we already uh, get. So I'm going to have that return result. Okay. And I think, um, yeah, I think that will be, that will cover all the, all the cases for, for the, for the solution. And I think we can, we can just check if we have, if we, unless, just to, to see that we don't have any typos or, mm -hmm. or that I didn't miss anything. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to, going to just check a little quick, really quick that I think it's, so we are checking of the input that we have uh, at least uh, 
at a value. So if that's the case, we're going to return an empty list and then we are checking our base case. And then we have the loop. Okay, so it's going to for it's going to be from zero to the or to the length of the expression of the sorry the input, and here we have our one character from the expression or from the input, and we have the evaluation of the operator. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we are uh, we are splitting the expression. So I think. I think it looks fine. I think we can uh, just run the solution with uh, one of the examples that we have. So I will add that to the to the main code, which is where I'm going to call the the method. Mm -hmm. So we will have the the first case, which was uh, two minus one minus one, uh, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call evaluate expression and I'm going to send the input and after I I'm going to have this in a variable I'm going to call it again result and then we can we want to uh, print the, the the result and I'm going to use this method to join all the values into a single string, with, uh, which will be just a list, like the one we have in the, in the example. And, um, and I think that would be, just to check that everything is, it's correct. So I think that would be it. And so, uh, let's, let's try to run this, see if we, have any uh, errors or something and I think perhaps um, and uh, perhaps I have a typo or something and um, let me check and it says that we have too many characters in a character literal uh, okay I think I see it the error I have a quote instead of the single quote. Okay, so I think that was it there. Okay, okay. Um, I think uh, another thing it's... It looks like you got like, a typo. My, excuse me? Looks like there's a typo on your name. Uh, I think I... I missed to say that this is a public method and evaluate, yes. Uh, also they have a type of thank you. And uh, so I think that was a problem. And write, uh, sorry, this is write line, no write list, sorry, miss that. Um, and the last one says that I can uh, declare, I. Yeah, because I'm using the, the same name here. So I'm going to put this just val one because I can have two variables the same name. So miss that. Mm -hmm. And I think that was it. So the errors. Okay, so let's try again. Um, evaluate expression, uh, sorry. So I think King says that it's not in the, the current context. Um, should be, okay, this. The typo. <laughs> Evaluate expression. I don't know, I think it's correct. No, there's a typo on line 47. Uh, 47. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're right. Evaluate expression. Yeah, I was missing an A. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I think I shouldn't have this. Okay, I think that's 
uh, finally. Uh, so we have two and zero, which is, I think, was correct for this case. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, so we can try, uh, I guess, the other uh, example. I'm gonna just paste some inputs and outputs, the expected outputs at the very top, just for reference. Okay, thank you. This mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the second one here. Um, let's see if that also works. Okay, so we have, uh, okay, minus 34, and then we have 14. Well, we have 310, so it's fine. And I think that's, uh, that's correct also. And we can, do you want to, uh, to add more, uh, more tests? Yes. Daniela? Yes. So how about we try, I'm going to paste another input here. So here's another one for you. Um, okay. I, I see it. Um, I will copy uh, this value. So it's a two uh, multiply three and plus two multiply three, multiplication three. Okay, so we'll put this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run this and the result should be 18, 30, 12, uh, 30, 30, 12, 30 and 24. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was also correct. I I guess we can we can add more or we can go to see what can we optimize. I don't know if what you prefer. I I think, I think that's that's a good idea to evaluate this from a, a complexity yes slightly and see. Yeah. Uh, well, in in terms of a space, uh, the space is. Uh, it's a const. It's a solution with constant space, and uh, so I will, I will say that the space is uh, constant because always we were using just one additional uh, variable, which is the the result or the or the list. Uh, so, and in this case, since it's a recursive solution, we don't call the call the stack. So that's that would be uh, just constant space always, no matter of the number of or the length of the string i think and and in case of the time complexity i think that's kind of a it i think in this case uh, it's more i'm not sure exactly how would be measured the time but i i think would be very similar to when you are traversing a binary tree because we have in this case we have a Kind of a tree a structure because we are calling and uh, what we, we're doing recursive calls and every time that we uh, discover or part this expression we have a path and so i think it's very similar to that but uh, but in this case it's not a binary tree because we don't we don't only have left uh, and right because we are uh, splitting and finding more ways to split or the or divide the expression so it is not exactly a binary tree so I think it will be uh, in in a, um, in that uh, in that way in an exponential expression uh, mm -hmm. for example for a case for a binary tree will be two um, power of n with where n is the number of nodes in mm -hmm. this case could be not just two, perhaps even more, and and n will be the number of operators, perhaps because that defines the number of branches that we have in the expression. So I would say it could be around this time. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I will have to perhaps finding a way to to get this right, but I think it will be in this in in this uh, matter of time, like this this kind of. Uh, approach mm -hmm. if you could see if if we had m m uh, operators and we had n numbers right, right. then uh, you could take that into account because 
as the number of, of yeah. operators increases, uh, the number of... Yeah, because it's exponential. Yeah. Uh, it's like In I was uh, thinking, it's an exponential expression. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and, and it's like, I think based on the number of, like you said, the numbers, and also I think it's, um, it's also important to know how many operators we have because the operator defines how many paths we are going to be splitting Okay. So that's that's what I think that will give us like around what can, what time is for this um, for this algorithm. Okay. So I think that would, I I would say that yeah it's a exponential time perhaps that would be a better answer. All right. So what are the, some of the like the quick and easy things that you could do to reduce this time complexity if you were to just look at the code and look at the examples yeah and i can do right uh, i think what uh, what we have here is that for example in the results we can see that some of the expressions are evaluating to the same value yeah for example i have uh, in in the last case i have two times the number 30 which means that the evaluation, the the yeah, the evaluation of this expression has this value. So we can uh, we can use uh, instead of doing the calculation over and over, we can find if we have already perhaps this this expression or the value that we are looking what, that we are about to um, to evaluate. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we can use an approach like memoization to save some time in the, in the calculations of, of the expression. So we can use a dictionary where uh, we can save all the, 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 all the computations that we are doing, we can add them to, to a dictionary where we can look at them mm -hmm. or look for the expression and, and see if we have already evaluated that expression and then we can, we can save that time. So I think will be that uh, the, first, the first thing that I will be optimizing and perhaps uh, there are some other minor details like for example instead of having uh, this um, this if we can perhaps do a method that uh, just evaluate the x the character instead of having this condition or perhaps looking uh, at ways to uh, instead of having this substring method because there's these methods uh, sometimes are a very sometimes artists though or especially when we are using strings and we we can uh, using uh, perhaps a list where we can have instead of uh, doing this uh, service string we can use a list where we have all the all the tokens or, or the parts of the expression mm -hmm. and that perhaps also could be an optimization of this of the code so, and I think that, um, I don't know if we can, we think we can, we can uh, implement that. Okay. So we have uh, 13 minutes. 13 minutes left. 13 minutes left. Okay, so Gabriela, since we have some time left, uh, uh, can you uh, uh, just code the part involving the, I think you mentioned the mem memoization. How yeah. uh, could you go about doing that? Sure. Okay, uh, the, let's try to implement uh, that. So this uh, dictionary will be uh, something that we will be um, using every time that we call the method of the evaluate expression, uh, because we are going to be adding the values and also uh, we are going to look at that uh, every time that we look, we are calling the evaluate expression method. So I will declare this, uh, I will declare the dictionary in my main method so I can send them, so I can send it in to the evaluate expression. And, and this dictionary, it's, uh, it's going to have dictionary. It's going to have, um, yeah, um, the string, which is the expression, because that's going to be the key of of my dictionary. What I want to look for is that 
perhaps if I have already come, uh, evaluate an expression that looks like the expression I'm going to do. So that's, that's what I want to look for. So, and then I have, I will have the value of this expression, which is going to be the integer. So I, that's, this I'm going to name as a catch. And so just to, to know that we are saving this. Uh, so it's that Frank uh, and okay, so I'm going to change that in my signature also of the method. Uh, I'm going to change the order of these lines and then I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to again also add it here an input and this is going to be my catch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so first the first thing that i want to check before before going over to the computations of the of the value or the string uh, I think that the base case will be the same. Uh, I think that would be, yeah, that would be the same in this case. It's, it's not going to change because that, that's, that's when we have the base case. And, but if I don't have the base case and it's uh, what I'm going to add here, it's I'm going to look for the input that I have. So if the catch it uh, contains see if, if I have this catch uh, if I have this input mm -hmm. so I'm not going to um, do anything so uh, when I want to well if I if it's yeah if this is uh, already in the and the catch, we don't have to do anything else. And I guess uh, we can, while we're here, I guess we, we can, that catch is contained the input, because we can add a note. So if that, if it doesn't contain, then it's when I want to evaluate So you could also short circuit this, right? So if, if the cache, like, like you had it before, if the cache contains the input, then right. you, you, you already have the, the answer, correct? Right. So then uh, you just need to... Yeah, in that case, uh, if I have already the expression, I, I wouldn't be adding uh, again the same expression. So um, yeah, I will be adding that uh, result mm -hmm. to the list of results. And yeah, I think that's, uh, in this case, uh, I will add, yeah, just um, the value of this expression. Right. So it's going to be the catch of this input. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if, that's not the case and uh, we can go over the input as we have already done it. Right. And when we are having a new expression, we are going to add that to the, to the dictionary. And okay, so, so I will add, um, I will add um, the expression here after the, the, I think I will add it to the, for each. Mm -hmm. After the for each. And so I will be adding catch. And it will be, guess the left, the left part and I will be adding the value of that also. 
And so, okay, but this is uh, the value we have, we have already value here, right? We have this value. So do you need to add it here or do you need to add it at the very end when we've computed the total result corresponding? Right, to uh, that's a good question. And yeah, I think, yeah, after, after we have the result compute, yeah, I think that would be perhaps a better approach instead of using mm -hmm. every, yeah, because we, we still don't have that until we reach out, mm -hmm. uh, until we finish the four uh, loop. Uh, okay, so yeah, you're, you're right. And so we have the value, which is, um, we have the result, which is the result. I can, I can use, a, I'm going to use a variable to save the result of this uh, iteration. So we can um, save I it here. Think, I think we are running out of time, but okay. just, uh, I, yeah, this, this just look good. I think just, we just need to think about what the value would be corresponding to that input key, right? So when we talk yeah. about the input key, the output, you know, is of what's the form of the output? It's a list, right? So that's just something to think about. But, but this okay. was good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it. yeah, perhaps mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, using a list instead of a, a string, right? That's what you are. Yeah. Uh, for the, for yeah, the, in, the, in the dictionary for the for the value, but, but mm -hmm. this good, um, okay, yeah, job. and um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Elaine. Thank you. Okay, a uh, great job. Thank you to both Gabriella, our interviewee, and Danielle, our interviewer. Uh, it. Uh, yeah, I just cannot express how thankful I am that uh, you two have done this for us. Um, I would like to, for the benefit of people who are, might be watching this in the future on YouTube, um, maybe have a little bit of a debrief and question and answer session. Um, so um, Danielle and Gabriella, do you want to make a, a few remarks and then we can also take some questions from people? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So. Elaine, I, um, are you asking for me to get feedback as an interviewer? Is that what you're looking for or do you would like us to go with the solution? Um, let's see, uh, I think, uh, let's hear your feedback as an interview. Let's do both <laughs> if you All right. have time for it, yeah. Um, the first and foremost, I like the way Gabriella took my hints and feedback as she was working through her code, uh, she did listen and she was paying attention. So it was more for collaboration. Also, I like the way that she um, she went through the uh, through the different uh, use cases, right? The different inputs, and uh, just walked me through what her thought process was. So that was the that was the positive. And uh, she also was thinking about ways to optimize. And then in addition, she identified uh, certain functions that, that could be uh, kind of more time consuming and more, well, she, was, she was thinking of efficiency towards the end. But she, she started off with just the approach to let's solve this problem. Um, so I, I did really like that. Um, but the only feedback that I had in, in terms of improvement was uh, Perhaps just before she jumped into coding, uh, she could have uh, put down in the whiteboard document just a brief, like an algorithm, just very, very brief as to as to what was uh, what her uh, thought process was going to be like. But but she also talked through it, so so I was I was able to to follow pretty well. 
So that's that's my my feedback on this. Gabriella, thanks a lot, Daniela. Yeah, very good feedback. Did you want to share uh, what was your experience as an interviewee? And yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's very important, uh, like to have a good um, understanding of the problem. So it's always good to, I think for me, it's always good to clarify what I have understood of the problem. Because if, if I have the same, if I have any doubts or uh, perhaps like having this thought uh, process over the, the examples that are in the, in, in, in the whiteboard in this case, and I think that would, that will communicate the message that I, I get the, or I got the, the idea of the, of the problem. And so I think that that will be very relevant to do in, in, any, in a real uh, interview. And, and if that's not clear enough, one, one of the things that we can do is give more examples or trying to make up more examples before jumping on the code. So I think that also it's it's good, and this wasn't the case because I think I was um, clear with the problem with with examples that were provided. But let's say if we didn't have any examples, in that case, it's always good to make up one example before uh, to to try to to clarify any doubts or any critical parts if we could have one, and and so that was. Uh, I think that that was easy in this case. I think that was uh, good for the problem. And, and I think the guidance that you gave me was very good when I was uh, do, doing the code and for the little things that I was missing. And so it was, it was good. So thanks for also for, for doing that. And also the approach about the memoization. And I think that that's something that, that for me it's uh, it's still uh, I would like to finish it and because it, I think it will be a very good optimization of the code. So I think also that was that was great to point me out to to what kind of things were like having the structure for this uh, solution with the optimization. Yes. Okay. okay. And and also yeah the the time complexity was something that was a little tricky and. But I think uh, that will like be having like pointers about what do you think is a solution of in this case about having like if you don't have a clear answer about how many or how much is the time, and um, I think always at least try to to think how could be yes. time complexity. Yes, in terms of time complexity. You know, you, you did mention binary trees. So when you think of binary trees, we are we're thinking of a static root. But, right. you know, this is almost like a binary tree on, on steroids because your yeah. root is, is changing, right? You, you start with the first operator as your root. You have a left tree and right tree, and then it moves on to the next operator. So that's just right. an interesting one. Yeah, definitely. It, it would be good to, to do some research about how this could be measured in a good way, to, in a more accurate way. Lynn? Um, sure. So uh, let's see. We had some questions in the chat. Um, yeah, I see. That's right. Uh, so did we cover if that the input is supposed to be a string of two or more numbers with no operators? I would say, uh, okay, if the input is just a string of two or more numbers with, I think in this case, uh, the, the specification of the problem says uh, that we have uh, numbers, only number from uh, one to nine. I, it's only one digit because when you have, um, you, you are uh, going over the, the expression or the input uh, one character at the time. And so I guess you, it would be just a matter of uh, adding a validation instead of uh, doing an evaluation of the, uh, of the characters by one by one, 
we can look up for uh, for the number until we finish up on the, for an operator, which is very similar to what we have already. But yeah, it will be just uh, perhaps just. Uh, can I add? So I could I could answer to I think it's one dear one dear ask the question right. What's the output supposed to be if the input is just a string of two or more numbers with no operators? Oh, okay. So yes, actually that that's a, a good uh, like a uh, question to ask as far as input goes. So then I would I would have clarified and said uh, there's no white space is allowed. So in in our input you can be you you can be guaranteed that there's going to be no like white space. So you, so you cannot have a string, and I'm going to paste it in the chat. You cannot have a string like this. The two space like two, right? So that's that would that you 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 will not get that. You will at the most uh, like, and you just to clarify, uh, uh, Gabriela, you could have a double digit number. You could you could you you could you could have. In this case, oh, uh, can I add something? Yes. All right. Um, I think uh, your condition is based on the operators. Like only if it's uh, sees the place or multiplication yeah. or the division, it enters that. So if there are two numbers, just two numbers without any operator of this, then the result table will be empty. So it will be return the empty, right? If you have just two numbers? Gabriel, yeah. why did you, you test yeah. this? Right. this let's, the, let's, let's, try that. Uh, let's try that out. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let's try this. Uh, just the numbers or do you think that we can add a space? Uh, I think she's asking for a space. So let's put two space two. Okay, two space two. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's, oh, but I have the changes of the memoization. So perhaps Oh, I see. Uh, okay. we can, let oh, me just goodness. comment out this thing, this line, and perhaps I think that will be, uh, well, I will have to do a little bit of changes. Let me just, uh, just take this out. Okay. And, and I think that would be enough to try, I think. So on the chat, Elaine, if you could make this interactive, I'd like people to respond with what they think the answer is going to be. OK. All right, let's go. <laughs> OK, so let me just check that I don't miss any anything here. and. Uh, okay, I think that's it. The, right. And um, well, it says uh, we have a term string, and uh, that's a type we think. Um, so I think. Someone gave a, gave a good hint. They said that we look for those operators. So first oh, okay. all, there's no operator here. So let's let's think out loud. So we have two space two. Uh -huh. There is no operator, so oh, we have some typos and in the line 50, 58, 58, oops, 58, yes, Just, I'm, going, I'm commenting out the lines that we added, that the evaluate does not exist. Oops, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's that I have uh, changed more things than I thought. So yeah. it's in line 75, yes, uh, here because I have, okay, let me see, I think it does. Uh, I think that's a typo. Uh, int evaluate. Yes, uh, yes, there's a typo there. But I'm going to comment out that. Okay because that's not necessary for this case. Things anyway. So I think that um, is running and... So I, I don't know, it is running. This is running, I think. Yeah. But I don't see any, any output. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a... So, so Gabriel... So result, yes. Your yeah, well, solution did not crash. It was yeah. able to handle this invalid kind of, you know, string over that, that we actually received. And um, so that's, that's yeah, good. 
Yes, because yeah. um, if, if, if you, if you uh, notice, uh, Gabriel, if you can just scroll a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the only time when we add to the result is when we encounter the operator and we, we actually process it, right? So that's when right. we, so that's when we are adding to the result. Or in the right. other case, if it was just a single number, like in the like right on top. So if you look at right. this is, so so that's yeah. where it is. Right. Yeah. So it's an empty an empty list. The result. Yes. So uh, thanks for everyone who participated and, and for Wandio for asking the question. <laughs> I think Armando wrote one, but oh, there was some, there was, yeah, there was oh, some. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> Armando, Elaine, yeah, Elaine will, will send you your prize after the meeting. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, great. Right. Thank you. Great. So let's see, we had an, I'm still going to the top of the list of questions. Um, Milena asked um, uh, if the dictionary structure, how that would translate to JavaScript. Um, Armando answered that you could do an object with a key value pair. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had uh, someone asked um, how long you practiced. And they said mm -hmm. that they get very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> To have to practice. Um, well, I think it depends for everybody. I think in my case, I I have done uh, some months of practicing, and I th I still think I I need to I need to practice more, <laughs> of course. But my daily job uh, it's uh, about doing um, doing code, although not doing this kind of algorithms. But I think. Um, yeah, that helps also a little bit, but doing, I, I would say that doing practice every week, like two times or three times, or perhaps two exercises by week, it's, it's a good, it's a good cadence. And I would also add that it'd be nice if, uh, you could, if, if you guys could find like, a, an interview buddy. So, yeah. Gabriela and I, we, we connected over Slack and Elaine made the, intro, intro, in, the introduction. That's how we got introduced to each other. And then we, we started meeting like once, once a week. We tried to meet once a week mm -hmm. and we practiced through this and using this kind of a setup, right? Using a whiteboard and using codapad.io. So if you could find a buddy, whether it's on in this group or whatever, you know, it, it is, it is really helpful to talk through the process and have somebody also time you. Uh, so, and, and, then, and then of course, give you feedback. So that the right. practice, the, the technical practice as well as just going through the motions and going to this interview a practice would be great. So when you both meet, do you solve random questions or the questions that you have already done or how do you? No, we picked uh, we picked a, a set of problems, and we go over the problem and explain what it, what the thought process is, and and that that's most of the time. And sometimes the solution gets very easy. It's it's easy. Sometimes it's not. And so sometimes we can we have to go over the the code for more than once, and that's when we have to like check or or try to find more techniques or practice for that kind of algorithms if that's the case but so it varies from time to time depends on the complexity of the of the problem how do you practice do you use something like lead code yes well in my case i have used lead code or in or with a book sometimes or the coder path, or also, or the ID, the any ID that you that you would like to use, and it's good. The only benefit that when you use a platform like Lead Code is that you have the use cases or the unit test or test cases already, and that kind of saves you sometimes 
sometimes because you are you have to be like checking if your solution covers all the test cases and that's something that i guess with lead code it's easier but you we can pick the the way that is more like perhaps uh, that where you feel more confident and then perhaps switching and from lead code to your ide or to something else or practicing with someone else perhaps Um, I'll just uh, read some other questions that are here. Um, do you code in different languages, both of you, or did you learn each other's language? How is the translating happening? Well, in, in my case, uh, um, I, I have code in Java or C sharp. The one that I feel more comfortable is C sharp, but I also can, can do some Java or I also understand Python but I'm not so proficient. So the one that I feel more confident is C-sharp and I also don't have to check the documentation, for example, because I'm, I'm very familiar with language. So that's, that's my preference. So as far as I go, I'm, I'm comfortable with C++ and um, uh, C-sharp as well. But the, right lately I've been coding more with Python. So when, when I uh, have to practice, I, I use Python. Them. We're done. Any okay. other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a question, but it's kind of a, it's a doozy. <laughs> I'll wait for Okay, well, um, I would like to ask my question. You can say no. <laughs> oh, wait, okay, so we have a question. Um, will they ask to cover more test cases in an interview setting? Yeah, I guess it's, it's valid if they ask you for covering more, more test cases. Yeah, I think it sometimes depends on the interviewer, but you will have to be, uh, yeah, prepared prepare for covering more, more test cases if you, if, if they ask you or you can ask, I guess. That's, that's my, okay. my thought. <laughs> Have you ever been asked like a blanket question on coding? Like I did an interview one time and they just asked me to write something in anything. Mm. In SQL, I think uh, was the question. And I sat there and I thought, well, it's like I could just write a simple line, you know what I mean? A select or a query or something, or do I pick something that's more elaborate? Like, how do you gauge in that case, which way to go? You know what I mean? Do you guys have any, any standards that like, if you were asked just a blanket question like that, that you automatically go to something that's more unique or complex, or do you keep it pretty straightforward? I think I would ask them clarifying questions. I would ask clarifying questions. And so before I would just go and start coding, I would, I would ask them, so, uh, so you would like me to write some sequels? So for example, uh, you, can, you can cite an exam, uh, like something that, that you have done maybe at work or whatever, uh, like a SQL command that you've used, maybe you have to get something done. So that's an example. SQL commands. So you can you can uh, see clarity from the interview as to what they're looking for. And if they refuse clarity, they want you to just, you know, come up with something. You know what I mean? Like, so then, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm like, are they, is this a trick question? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then it actually puts you in a better position because then you have control of the interview and it gives you a chance to tell a story, right? So you can say, you know, in my past experience, I, I had to, I had to do something. I had to get this information from this database. I had to do a select or query, whatever I had to do a filter. I had to do a join. There was a need to do this, and then you can you can tell a story, 
and actually when the interviewer tells you things like that it's actually a, a benefit for you because you are in control right now right. you get to tell the story and you are holding the conversation so i would not look at it as a negative way i would actually turn it into something positive sure so thanks Uh, as yeah. far oh sorry go ahead i think it was skartika please please go ahead oh can you hear me <laughs> sorry i was on mute um yeah. can you as me? far as the test cases are concerned i think they will expect us to cover all the edge cases as well right yeah yeah if you find something that it could be an it could be said that it's an edge case it would be better to it would be i think it could give like you points your, it would yeah, give you points with the interview ones if you if you go over that and you and also always said uh, if you share that that you find that you find some edge cases that's that's great i think it's it's good it's it's it talks about your thought process and uh, and that you are thinking about all the all the test cases even the edge ones that that's good yeah and actually kartika that is a that is a good practice that when you're just going over all the examples right that the interviewer has given you you talk to those edge cases up front so like the edge case that one one year cited right what if you are given a, a string with just two numbers and then there's a space right so yeah that, that that's an edge case i think we went through some right okay what if uh, it's just a single number but then what if it's an uh, it's an it's 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 just an, an empty string right yeah so it's all the so so that's it's a good practice to identify that up front and uh, and then you know just Uh, I, I see one more question from Natalie. Uh, it, she says, uh, "Do you both interview potential engineers?" Yes, in my case, I do. Uh, sometimes in my in my work, uh, they ask me to uh, um, to help with the with the recruiting process. So that's that's something that sometimes I I get to do. I don't know. Do you, Daniela? Yes, I have as well. Mm -hmm. So, so and then it, I see an that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's an it's an experience, you know. Sometimes you are on the interview side, and sometimes right. you are the right. interview. So that's why I'm so glad that we have women who code and we have these kind of sessions, so that we are always practicing and staying sharp, right? So, it's it's a good thing. Exactly. So I I see that uh, Nadini has another. Question, I think, uh, so it said, if it is a new problem, which we are coming across during an interview, there might be times we go ahead with the flow of solution and we realize we could solve it in a better way and scratch off and redo. How is it per perceived by the interviewer? Do you want to answer, Daniela? Or so this is, I'll share some of my experience and then also what I've heard from other folks who, who interview. So the interviewer is actually looking to see uh, the, how you uh, formulate like your thought process, right? How you, you are understanding the problem and then coming up with a plan to solve the problem. So they are looking for, um, uh, for, for someone who like, how, how, how do you plan, right? Or do you just jump in and tackle the problem or what? Yeah. So sometimes, sure, you might just come up with something that is not expected. But at least if you have been communicating, you've been, uh, you've been walking, walking them through your thought process, then that's good. So I would not consider that to be a bad thing. Because sometimes you might, be, you might just be stumped by the problem. But you can uh, you you just share what you know and the best way you would approach it. So I would that's that's what I would I would do. 
and and then always being uh, sometimes you know your interview will give you will give you hints sometimes to kind of guide you and in, in, encourage you they they really want you to you know be as success, successful as you can so they will encourage you along so don't you should not uh, the worst thing you could do is just kind of freeze right uh, but to just be calm and communicate and then walk through what your thought processes gabriella do you have something to add yeah i think so i i agree with you i think it's it's not a bad thing to to realize that you, perhaps you can do something better and i think that that it's a valid uh, scenario and 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 you shouldn't be feeling bad if you if you got the, the of you realize in the middle of the of a solution so i think that's it's not a bad thing. Now it looks like the, there are no more questions, I think. Uh, so, Elaine. So. Great. Uh, well, I think we'll go ahead and stop the recording. I'm going to clap so that. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so clear and helpful. And it's so like, so good for all of us to see people who look like us solving these problems and working through it and uh, being very clear and deliberate about it. So I really appreciate it. And I'm sure everyone here does too. So thank you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. That is another episode of Mucoco Code San Francisco, Algorithms and Interview Prep. Thank you and good night. Stop it recording. Bye. <laughs> hey.